Max Morning, and welcome to this training on Craft Your Story. Our business is driven on storytelling, and it's so critical to really nail down the importance of your story and how other people can relate to your story. I think that's the key thing. So we're going to go through the format of how to create your story and by the time you're done, you're going to take this business to a whole new level. So let's get started on the Craft Your Story. My name is Tammy Sellers Jingra, Crown Diamond Associate here in Daytona Beach, Florida. And here we go. All right, so we're going to, I'm going to share the layout of the trainings that will be coming. And we're putting all these new training trainings together in 2021. So we're going to start with number five, which is your story. And it's the most important part of this business is, is you and creating relativity with uh, everybody you meet. And then we're going to go into how to uh, perfect your opportunity presentation. That one's going to be a fabulous training as well and uh, how to get people started right, critical when somebody's starting the business, and then of course the business skills, which is the success cycle series. And then of course, really branding yourself and your signature talk. So it's all about the story. So why is it important for you to tell your story? Well, more than ever right now, people are looking for an opportunity. There's so much online. People are overwhelmed and they buy you first. You have to understand that. And that's why it's so important more than ever to have your story, why you're passionate about Max and what Max is doing for you. So we're going to craft this and lay it out. I highly recommend to get a paper and pen handy and start taking some key notes as I'm doing the presentation. So let's start with the story layout. There's four parts to the story layout. First is your before, your background, okay? Part two is what didn't you or don't you like about it? Some of you are still building, um, building this business at extremely part-time level. So you might be sharing in the present or the past, okay? Part number three, it's about that pivot. It's about that change. What happened for you to, um, you know, to be part of Max? What was it that got you part of Max? And don't be shy to say the name of the person that introduced you to the business. By first name, you can say the name. Uh, part number four is now. Okay, so what is your now in, in building this business? now your future some of you are brand new building this business some of you are experienced building this business so you've already got a foundation of a story started you might want to just uh, step it up and uh, and create a better better platform for your story so your story timeline this one is really critical uh, you want to capture people's attention within the first 30 seconds especially on social media, because you will lose the interest of your audience. Okay, so the beginning is so important to create that connection. So part one and two before and what didn't you like is a maximum of a minute. Okay, you might as you craft it, it might be a lot, but then you you might be able to, you know, weed out some of this stuff as you start practicing your story. Part number three is what happened? What was your pivot? Okay, what was your changing moment? And that in 30 seconds. And part number four is what's going on in your business now, why you're excited about the future, and that, um, nail that one down in less than a minute. So the key is to get a two minute story, but you're crafting it in two and a half minutes. And honestly, when people get started, they tend to go even longer. You know what I'm talking about for those of you who are already crafting your stories because you feel like you have to give more and that is not accurate, okay? What's important is they, they connect to you, okay? 
we always say, um, say less, mean more, okay? So have more um, emotion and value for people. Okay, so the story guidelines, no mention of disease names, okay? It's very important, especially if you're building this business on social media or out in front of an audience. It's very important that you do not share disease names. Okay, you can talk about some challenges like inflammation that's been creating some discomfort for you, some pain, um, you know, losing focus, having a hard time breathing, a lack of energy, headaches, whatever you, you had your challenges with. Okay, so think about some of the things you want to share, but without the, without the disease name, okay? And no mention of how much money um, you earn. This one is also very important, especially when you're on social media or in a big crowd, okay? It's very important that you do not mention that. And what's important is, is your lifestyle. That's what people are looking for. They really don't care how much money you make. They want to know how you can help them, okay? That's what they really want to know, okay? So you can talk about being able to buy a new car, um, maybe take the family on vacation where you couldn't do that before, um, you know, going to be able to go to a restaurant without having to look at the, the uh, right side of the menu with the price tag. You just look at what you want to eat, right? The same thing with shopping. I mean, if you're walking by... And you see this beautiful dress ladies in the showroom. I mean, you want to be able to go in that store and just buy that dress, right? You don't want to look at the price tag. So that's the kind of lifestyle that you want to create for you and your family. Um, may, maybe you're, uh, you know, in a situation where you're working many jobs. I know a lot of people I talk to have to work a second and third job just to get out of debt or just to, you know, to be able to survive. And maybe you can share something like you've been able to, um, you know, build Max on a part-time level, just working your one job where before you had to work three jobs or whatever, you know? So these are the things that you want to be sharing because you, you want to create that relativity with people. If your story is relatable, they will listen to you. If your story's not relatable, you tend to lose them in the story, okay? So try and keep it as generic as possible so that most people can connect. All right, so what to say. So part one, so before, your background. A little bit about uh, your education or lack of education. Um, I finished high school. You know, so be, don't be afraid to say that because today I teach people who are highly educated. Okay, so don't be afraid to say if you don't, if, if you had less or you, you weren't able to do some of the things you wanted to do because that's part of your journey. That's part of your story. Um, what do you do? Uh, what do you do for a living? Okay, so share that, but at the same time, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about it. So keep it as simple as possible. I think, I think key points are important when you're creating your story, because when you start writing out all this stuff, you're going to find you're going to put a whole lot of stuff that you don't really need. Okay, so people won't remember the details of what you did. Um, they will always remember how you make them feel. And if they can relate, then they'll want to follow you. If they can relate, they'll want to do business with you. So you must understand that. All right. So what to say? What to say in part number two? What didn't you like about it? Okay. So bring the emotion into this part. You know, at the beginning, you know, the the the, the energy is more casual, low key, but not too low because you want to capture people's attention. So you want to bring the emotion into this part. Slow down your tone and talk slower, okay? Talk slower and have a concerned look, you know? You, you got to have some expression in connecting with people. Uh, and it should come very natural, all right? Um, so I've been emotionally drained. I'm so tired of not getting ahead financially. How many people can relate to that? Everybody, okay? So that's a good one. 
as hard as I work, it feels like I'm never appreciated. All right. You feel the passion that I'm sharing with you as I'm talking. And that, that's what you're going to bring into it in a natural way. All right. Um, I see the sadness in my kid's face when I get at home and I'm just exhausted. And I don't have time. They just want, they just want me. They want to play with me. Right. So moms, dads, they can relate to this. All right. So don't be afraid to bring that into the picture. I find that the stories that are the most impactful are, are often family driven stories. Okay, if you don't have any children, it's about, you know, parents or other family members, siblings or whatever. As a stay at home mom, I want to have my own independence and money so that I can contribute to our family. How many stay at home moms have that feeling that they're not contributing, even though I think they're all superheroes because of what they do and they're a huge contribution internally. A lot of women feel like if they don't bring home some money or they don't bring in some money, they don't feel like they're contributing. So imagine all the women that you're going to connect to. So moms out there, please share that because you're going to leverage your story in such a big way. Or dads, stay at home dads. Okay. So what to say part two continued. So um, you might say something like it bothers me knowing that any time I can be re replaced and downsized. And I am I am or was dependent on my job. I've talked to many people who have lost their jobs. I've talked to many people who have lost their businesses and since the, the pandemic situation. You, you got to connect with people. It's so important and your story will do that. All right. So maybe it's something like I've been in pain. I've been in chronic pain for months, for years. And talk a little bit about the emotion of how it's affecting you, how it's affecting your spouse, how it's affecting your family. All right. You're going to capture their attention. I'm tired of going to the doctor, getting no results with my medication. Now you want to be careful with this one. Okay. But but I've talked to people who um, who get on the products are doing extremely well and they had tried all these other things through the traditional world and it just didn't work for them. OK, so you can easily share this if it's your story. Right. But you want to be um, respectful, always be respectful. And maybe I can't sleep through the nights. There's lots of people like that with stress issues that can't sleep through the night. So whatever your situation in is I'm putting out their ideas, but make sure that you can relate to these ideas. They actually are part of your story and your journey. Don't make up stuff because I'm throwing stuff out there. I'm just trying to create a little bit of ease for you to get started with your uh, creating your story platform. All right. Okay. Now that's going to part three. This is a pivot. This is when you found the solution. This is when you step up your energy. This is when you get totally passionate. All right. Your passion should be coming here. Then I met, say the person's name. You know, a lot of people don't say the person's name that brought them in. Even if they're not actively building, say their name. It's fine. Just say their first name. Okay. Always, um, you know, honor the people who brought you into this business, even if they're not around anymore. Just say, you know, a, a friend of mine, Whoever the name is introduced me to blah, blah, blah. Or I, I, I met a, a gentleman by the name of so-and-so um, when I was walking through a trade show, whatever it is. Okay. Because this is your pivot. So he or she told me about whatever it is you're going to say. And I was skeptical at first. Maybe you were skeptical at first. Say that because people can relate to it. They're skeptical as you're talking to them. Okay. I'm so grateful I met whoever it is, because my life has literally be, been transformed. If that is the case for you, share that. Don't share things that are not real. Keep it real because people read you. All right. They read your eyes. They read your body language. They read everything. Okay. So part four is now. This is the exciting part. This is when you really get passionate. So what the future looks like when people see you passionate about change, um, people are afraid of change, but when they see your excitement and your passion about the change that has occurred for you, 
they will want the same. All right. So it's important to share that. I'm so happy I didn't let my skepticism take over or get in the way because now blah, 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 blah. All right. You know your story or, or you can say, I am finally in control of how much money that I can make. How many people have no control of how much money they make and they don't know there's something out there that they can in, they can work on part time that they could earn extra money and eventually it could be something that they could do full time right like a lot of people with max so if you were part time you went full time just so leverage this okay um now i have the time and energy to spend with my kids i've heard many um stories from many women and men out there honestly i get teary-eyed because I can relate to them. I was the person that had a traditional business, always away from my children. It was emotional for me. It was difficult for me, but I knew I had to work. I knew I had to put money on the table. My, my, my eyes are watering right now because I, I you know, it, it always brings back that memory. And that's what you're gonna do to your audience. You're gonna bring back memories and emotion, even if they're older, all right? I'm a grandmother now. Okay, but I still remember having to walk away from my kids and have other people raise my kids because I had to create a life for my family. I wanted my kids to have great education. I wanted my kids to have more in life and, um, and not, not have the struggle. But it is important that they, they learn and not everything is handed to them on a silver platter. Okay, uh, so people may hear your words but they will feel your attitude, okay? So really bring uh, your character, your passion, your emotion into your story and, uh, and let people fall in love with you and fall in love with your story, okay? And capture people because you will. You're gonna bring back memories for, for, for them and that they're trying to run away from that they need to hear and that's going to bring them into having a look at this opportunity so the types of stories that you can use you can you can craft a few different types of stories okay and and have them ready in your portfolio here in connecting with people okay a product story a business story it could be a combination of the two when you're connecting with people a first seven day story or a 30 day story, whatever it is for you. If you had excellent results in seven days, share that story. I remember I had an associate um, in her first 10 days. Uh, she, she did incredibly well financially and we were on the road. We traveled together. We had fun. We brought a whole new, new group of uh, people into the business. And we built such a powerful relationship. We shared this story everywhere. And that story brought in a lot of people into the business. So your first seven day, you know, 14 day, 30 day is critical. That's why when you sign somebody up is engage them as quick as possible on the getting started training, which I'm going to, we're going to do, but that one, these are important stories. Okay. Cause people want to make money right away. All right, so share those passionate stories. A third party story. Here's the thing with that. You have to be careful with this one. You can share third party stories, but make sure you're able to do a third party call, third party Zoom session with them or introduce them uh, to your prospect in, in a meeting setting or whatever it is, in a Zoom meeting setting, whatever it is. Um, make sure you're able to use them as a, as a storytelling being your third party validation okay so you can do that as well so these are the different types of stories and when you repeat your story over and over and over it'll become such a natural thing for you we're working with groups right now small core groups who are working on stories within their groups and it's unbelievable the posture that has um, improved the confidence 
the um, ability to create their story has improved tremendously. And so ma and many things will improve as you start crafting your story. Okay, so our whole thing is about the dream of Max. It's about the vision, sharing the vision of who we are as a company. You know, the dream of uh, Herm Nagasawa, the vision of the company, you know, going into all these international markets, the team that has come together and the mission that we all have in taking these products in, into every single household out there so we can help improve um, people's health. We can help people be more happy as a family. We can give people more energy, you know, all kinds of things that this opportunity and the products can do for people. So keep the story of Max in mind as you're talking and sharing your story. And the key is to build a high level of trust. And most people right now are working on social media. And on social media, it's about uh, building a trust. They're buying you first, okay? Not your story, they're buying you first, all right? So the way you present yourself, um, your, your compassion, your authenticity, all of that is what they're buying, okay? So make sure you... Um, your be empathetic, all of that, because that's what they're buying. All right, stop keeping Max a secret. I, I I think Max International has been the best kept secret out there um, in the network marketing industry. I think a lot of people um, could really step up to the plate and share their stories a whole lot more. And I think through the storytelling platform, our secret is going to get out there through social media through more through uh, your environment, uh, your family, you know, when they see you start um, crafting stories and then doing them on videos, then they're going to go, wow, you know, they're going to see you change as a person. And then they might take you a little bit more seriously in how serious you are about the business, right? So stop being a secret agent. <laughs> okay. So here's the assignment. And if you follow through with this, you're going to get great results. Okay, so assignment number one is to write out your point form draft. Hopefully you've worked on that. So after this is done, after you finish this, don't go away from it. Okay, finish. That's the thing I think a lot of people do is they listen to a, a training and then they go home, they put their notes in their drawer and it's forgotten. Finish your projects you will be so proud of yourself and everybody around you is watching you. So if you have a downline, um, a team out there, they're watching you. So if they see you do it, they're going to have the courage to do it themselves. Okay, so write out your point form draft. Number two is put it in a story form. All right, number three is read your story to your leaders to get some feedback. Okay, and they can time you and they can give you some feedback and advice. All right. And and take that feedback as they, they really care about you and want you to grow. So don't take anything personally. If somebody gives you some feedback in the way that they know how to express it and um, and say thank you. Okay, and, and learn from these experiences. Don't just count on one person. Talk to somebody else, talk to somebody else. Next thing you know, you're going to get all this feedback from everywhere in your team and you're going to nail this down with support. You're not trying to do this alone. Okay, so take a video of you sharing this. So ask somebody to videotape you, get some good lighting, make sure the camera, you're dead on with the camera, you're not looking up, you're not looking down, make sure you're straight on, make sure the lighting is really complementing uh complimenting your yourself okay and number five is the practice all right practice your story on video your first one won't be your best one all right you have to understand that your first one won't be your best one but if you did five in a row or you did 10 in a row and then each day you start leveraging your story by prospecting and sharing your story everywhere. Guess what? You're going to be, you're going to master this. It's going to be so easy for you. Then when you're training people, you're going to be able to say, 
I didn't do great on my first video. As a matter of fact, I've got my first video. I'd like to show it to you. And if you have that first video, save it, okay? Because then you can share that with people. I'm sure we've got tons of data of stuff that Chris and I've done over the years, but I can tell you one thing. I mean, there's times even today as Crown Diamonds, you would laugh, but sometimes you're just not on your game on your first training video. Sometimes you have to just totally psych yourself out to get it going, right? And there's times where you start and you stumble with your own name and you just have to laugh and do another video, laugh and do another video. Okay. And just have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Nobody's judging you. Okay. You're the, you're probably going to be the worst judge of your own videos, but that's good because that's how you improve. So have an awesome, awesome, uh, uh, practice on all of this. I would love to see all of your videos and sharing in all the different WhatsApp platforms on the Facebook groups. Uh, it would be so great to see your videos. Alrighty. Have a good one.